Welcome back, everybody. It's time for the second European set of the day. Now joined by Anatoly on the desk. It's Simplicity up against Flashpoint. Simplicity, a team totally that has a lot of people excited and for good reason. I mean, Fails, Maniac, Death Panther, a lot of people that you should recognize. But they lost week one right. up against Outcold. That's right. But Outcold Gaming didn't have the best performance either. So who knows what week two is destined for. It was Flashpoint that beat out Queso as well in that first week. So you would think that Flashpoint should dominate it based off of those results. Yeah, especially with how Queso just played up against Outcold. Cold, but th this Flashpoint team is one that I think is a little bit less exciting on its face. You know, it's it's Johnny, yes, but Spanify, Fusify, Sibby. I mean, these are dudes that have been around for a long time, and they've always been kind of together on the same team. But I think that that's the part that people really don't value quite highly enough is the fact that there's a lot of synergy here for this team. Well, I think that could work out for them because if you just look at Queso, the way they played in that last game, right? Like, those players as well have stuck together for so long. You look at also... Uh, rival of Season 4 and Season 5. They used to be known as Cyclone GG back in Season 3, and they stuck together for so long. So That's right. I think a team to, uh, that stays together wins together in the long run. Well, Flashpoint certainly did that in the last game, but uh, or last week, rather. We'll see if they can repeat that performance this time up against Simplicity, who had a pretty good performance, I'd say, up against Out Cold last week. Maniac in particular was quite impressive in the way he played in the solo lane and with the, how big of an impact the solo lanes made in the last game, especially uh, Julio on that Vamana. Is that one of the matchups you're looking at in particular, Maniac versus Sibby? I think so. I think that uh, Maniac is going to switch it up a little bit because against Dimmy last week, he played a little bit passive, I would say, playing the Cerberus against an aggressive uh, picks that Dimmy was bringing out. So I think that Maniac style is more known for aggressively diving that backline, and that's what I'm expecting from him today. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Johnny, also known as the late-game hyper-carry player. I mean, it's yeah. so much Al Kuang. You played the Kali last week. And I think that that's a really good spot for your jungler to be in right now. Al Kuang seems pretty strong. Kali's starting to creep into the meta a little bit. We're seeing a little bit more of her. Maybe uh, maybe we'll see on the other side, though, for fails, maybe something a little bit more early game focused to shut down Johnny. I would be surprised not to see something more early game focused from fails. There needs yeah. to be aggression when you're dealing with a Kali or an Al Kuang. We saw a lot of Arachne so far in the minor league and a little bit of the console league. So maybe that's like the new thing, the new in vogue meta to try to get that early game jungle pressure. Especially if you play it the way Worst Turtle did in the last set. I mean, he he played lights out on that Arachne, and that and that sort of different identity is is something that we're seeing a lot more of in season six. It's a lot of picks that I didn't really anticipate being so prevalent. It's Cabracken in the jungle. It's Arachne in the jungle, and it's a lot more pressure warriors in the solo lane. We're seeing far less Guardians over there than we did last year. That's very true. It's more important to get that early pressure to try to control the totem of coups, get that 125 gold collectively every minute or so, that extra MP5 and mobility. Death Panther, one of the, uh, the highlight players here for Simplicity, without a doubt. His Giannis last week was very, very impressive. We'll see if he can match that performance here this week. And of course, his old teammate on Insignum Genetics in the support role, playing his signature Sylvanas. This is a character that we're seeing a couple people still go back to every once in a while, but it really just seems to be those Sylvanas fanatics that, that love to play him still. Speaking of fanatic, former fanatic member Maniac as well. Game number one, he was playing the Cerberus up against Alcohol Gaming, but game number two, playing the Arthur, being an absolute dominating factor. That's the kind of Maniac I've been known to see. King Arthur is definitely one of those picks that has been gotten through very few times in the times that it has it's been very very impactful oh, yes. so i anticipate that we'll see more and more king arthur bans i think the teams are starting to move away from banning or picking bacchus very early on mm -hmm. but i don't know how much that's going to last because every time he gets in a game it feels like he's making a huge impact it's true even the last game that uh, despite hazer losing he played a good bacchus and i think that it's a lot of him but also a lot of bacchus as well making that kind of impact between the offensive capabilities of the damage of intoxicate and also the passive defensive mitigations you can't go wrong ever picking bacchus but there's just so many picks that you have to worry about that bacchus is going to slip under the radar one of the lanes that we haven't really talked about in this matchup is going to be that duo lane we talked a little bit about the picks the bacchus and things like that, but who do you favor in Caspainify and Fusify or Streak Up and Genetics? I think a little bit of Caspainify because that lane because they've been playing together for so long. So you every little plan they have it in the back of their minds, almost to a point where they probably don't even have to communicate it now. They just know what's going to happen naturally. And if they can get the slight edge in that dual lane, that they might extend that to some invades. Certainly one of the things to be watching out for, and not, not just in the minor league or this match in particular, but season six is. 
how, how well your your chemistry is going to work together, especially with all the yeah. new teams in the SPL that are forming. I think quick chemistry is going to be uh, hard to come by, but very, very important without a doubt. We should be getting ready to go into picks and bans pretty shortly here between Flashpoint and Simplicity. Simplicity, as I mentioned, looking to bounce back from their week one loss up against Out Cold. This, uh, th these two teams, I think, are some of the more versatile teams that we have in the European minor league. They're kind of wild cards almost. They could be really, really strong. They could be challenging for the top spot in the European minor league. Or I think these teams could really struggle at times. Still too early to tell considering it's only week number two. We've only seen one best of three set between them and already Flashpoint thinking wow. of ways of shutting out genetics. Not a very common Sylvanas ban unless you rewind the clock all the way to season three Super Regionals. Yeah, that was a long time ago. But with those clips that genetics had, we just, uh, just showed them off for you. Then you can kind of understand. If you're hitting blink pools pretty consistently you're going to get some respect on your Sylvanas. But the AMC ban as well, really focusing out this dual lane, I think you're right, Tully, that Flashpoint's going to look to really take their aggression there. I'm expecting to see more dual lane picks as a, from Flashpoint, but with Arthur on the table, it makes sense that they want to allow that solo lane matchup to give Sibby more comfort in that lane. Now Simplicity has two picks to themselves. Freya and Giannis, the two bans. That means Gibalanke and Bacchus are both open here if that's exactly the direction that Simplicity wants to go in, but so is Vamana. And uh, I think you're always pretty safe picking Vamana early in this I meta. I think so, too. I think as long as he gets out of the laning phase safely, that he'll be a dominating factor diving those squishies in the back line. Now, maybe Flashpoint has to consider getting a Capri to keep whoever Vamana is targeting alive, and that's exactly what they do. That's a great call. That's one of the only ways to peel the Vamana, because you're not actually peeling him. You yeah. just need to help save your backliner, and Kepri's one of the only ones that can really do it effectively. And normally, the other way that you would peel him out is caging him in, but no longer not could anymore. be the case with <laughs> Vamana Ultimate going through those walls. That's right. Not going to work for you anymore is Fafnir, the selection here for Simplicity. Interesting. So, Genetics, when he can't get the Sylvanas, Decides to go Fafnir above the Bacchus. And Fafnir is something that we really haven't seen a whole lot of this year. Definitely not. I think it's a more mechanically challenging god. But if you're hitting pulls on Sylvanas anyway, you're going to be hitting the hammers on Fafnir. And I sure. think now there's going to be more of an attack speed focused uh, strategy from Simplicity. Vamana's relying on that. Shabalank is going to be relying on that. Sure. And maybe even pick something like a Mage ADC in that mid position. Certainly could work out for them as Agni and Raijin, the two bands here for Simplicity. Johnny gets a signature Alquang, so Flashpoint already probably feeling pretty good to get King Arthur and Alquang on their side as they ban away a couple mid laners in Hera and Isis. Hera is another goddess that I think we... I would have expected to see a little bit more early prioritization yeah. of. I don't think she was picked or banned at all in the first set. No, I don't think so either. And that Argus specifically is the main focus behind why she's so good. Getting that sixth MVP off the bench kind of player on your team is never Seriously. a bad thing. And just like I predicted with a Fafnir selection, it was more of an attack speed uh, kind of strategy with a Chiron now. Chiron mid lane almost certainly. But this is already going to be a four physical composition unless we see another magical jungler. Could Bracken could be on the table. It's true. Would be pretty good here, I think, up against Jingwei and Thoth, two gods that can get locked in fairly easily. I, do you think the Chiron is here for the cleanse? That's what we see most of the time, but in my mind, it might be for the masterful shot here to track Alquang once he goes into that illusion. That could be one idea, but I don't think that's the only wow, reason. There's a magical for jungler. It. Yeah. Changa going back to season three, DJ Pernick is Yeah, days. I was going to say, Pern uh, showing up here for Simplicity. Do you like this, this composition that Simplicity has put together? It's more of a mid-game focus. I don't like their early game. If they survive early game, I love their composition. We'll have to wait and see if they can do just that. Flashpoint looking to go 2-0 and oh the beginning of the year. Let's throw it to the casters for game one. Thanks so much, Agro and Anatoly. On the call today will be myself, Hindu, joined by Taco. And, of course, Doug on the camera, as always. Into the set we go. Flashpoint looking to go nice and clear at the top now, Taco, especially with their defeat of Queso last week. And also watching out Cold Gaming lose earlier today to Queso. If Flashpoint can find a victory here, they'll go top in the minor league in Europe. And this is a really big set for both of these teams with the implications involved, like you just mentioned. And I still think that Flashpoint, for what it's worth, that week one debut, they look fantastic. They did, and we'll see if they can continue that into this week now. Obviously, this is an established team with CB, Johnny, Fire, Crick, Fusify, and Kispanify, but it's Fusify that ate a little bit more damage than he bargained for there. Got a lot of aggro, had to use the shell early on. So small advantage for Simplicity at the moment. Wave clears relatively even between the two, I'd say. Shibalanke hits pretty darn <laughs> yes, hard, and I think Fusify is starting to discover that alongside a Kaspainify. 
Persistent Gus just to get a little bit more attack speed to try and return some of this poke fire, but Kispanivine Fusify is so far definitely on the receiving end of the poke for, for this lane. The desk was discussing the composition, the simplicity of put together here today. It's going to be Maniac playing the Chunga in the solo lane, the only magical god realistically on this team. Sure, they have the Fafnir, but Fafnir is really there to empower, well, their three physical dealers, the Vamana, the Chiron, and of course the Jubilonke. The later this game goes, Tolly, um, Taco, I've been casting to with Tolly so it's much. It's all right, Tolly called, who was it, Finch, Aggro? Did he? I think so. No, it was the other way around. Agro We're all having problems with names today. I don't know which one's worse, but yeah, anyway, the one thing about this composition is they're going to be, the later this game goes, Simplicity has a really good composition for bursting things down, objectives, and some sustain in this kit. I'm just not really sure how to feel about Simplicity for the mid to late game, because I, I do feel like the ranged poke potential from Flashpoint is going to be very problematic. Far Crick is going to be able to put in some decent work against yeah. these hunters. Thoth is probably one of the more difficult mages to deal with when you're running a double hunter composition because it's just so complicated trying to find a way to burst him down and get to the back line. One of the difficulties a lot of people have had this year is trying to deal with King Arthur in the solo lane specifically. And we've seen a lot of different variations of picks to try and counter this or at least not lose the lane in phase two. Bad Maniac going for the Chunga this game. How do you feel about that? I like seeing Maniac on the Chunga. I think that this is something that is very fitting for Maniac's play style because he's going to be able to have the impact that he wants during team fights thanks to the waxing moon but more importantly he's just got the sustain to match that from King Arthur he won't have to leave the lane one big issue that I think a lot of solo laners deal with when going against a King Arthur is they feel as though they get poked out too often or they feel as though they can't afford to stay in the lane as long because of mana sustain problems but Chang'e she's the best of both of those worlds uh, minus the fact that she's a little bit more prone to mm. dying from early ganks, but she's still going to be able to send her bunny back, and, and the Jade Rabbit being able to buy for her and bring those items back to the lane, that's what's going to be crucial for making sure Maniac can match the sustain. And I think that's one of the reasons as well. Maniac likes to go for this meditation that he's picked up at the start of the game too, meaning he can sustain in the lane with the mana regen from the buffs, as well as keep buying items and not go back to base to use the teleport. I'm wondering, though, if we'll see Johnny look for a bit of pressure there with his Al Kwong, maybe, trying to keep the, the Chunga down early. Is that worthwhile? For, for Johnny, most likely not, which is why I feel like this Chunga pick for Maniac is definitely a strong one. If anything, Johnny is probably going to be paying most of his focus towards Death Panner in the mid lane, maybe trying to get that Chiron ultimate out of the way early on, because they have a lot of dive potential thanks to Fusify running the Kepri. And, and that is going to be the territory for Johnny to work in best, is die the back line. If I die, it doesn't even matter because by then he should have the Scare's Blessing applied. Now Flashpoint definitely have an advantage just on paper with sticking together for such a long period of time as a whole team for the most part. Whereas Simplicity had a couple of roster changes, some new additions and some adjustments based off past players being with them. So there's a little bit of a mix of players that have stuck together for a while, but still adjustments to be made, which always changes the dynamic of a team. Now, Optimus Gang, I believe, is what is Flashpoint's uh, former teammates yeah. mostly coming Insignum from. Insignum is kind of Simplicities, but it's still not all there, right? There's a few extras or a few changes up on that. Genetics looking for a cheeky steal away at the purple buff. Looks like he was successful, so Jelenx just denies a little bit of farm, making sure Fusify doesn't get to level 5 just yet. But once that Kefri comes online, the you know the, the resurrection comes available, which could cause a couple more problems for the Simplicity squad. This is a low-pressure duo lane, though, for sure, from Flashpoint. Running, anytime you're running a Jingwei, you're basically announcing to the enemy team, we're not looking to do anything more than just clear our minion waves and confirm our buffs. Uh, luckily for Flashpoint, they haven't really had to worry about these red buff invades uh, because of the fact that Simplicity just haven't really had much opportunity, I think, to rotate just yet. So when you see Jingwei in lane, does that kind of just signify you're looking to farm to the mid to late game, get your full build almost online so you've got a bit more damage for the crits? Is that really it? Without a doubt. Johnny, though, trying to make something happen here, but there's just nothing to be found. Genetics and Streak Up, they were already on the run. And that was just, uh, I think, I already called out rotation. Yeah, I don't even, I'm not even mind streak ups used to the ultimate there very early on in that engagement, just to force everybody back, make sure they can't really see what's going on, mess with the communications a little bit. We keep shooting with the solo lane though, and Sibby's slowly but surely working towards his itemization build. It wouldn't surprise me to see a gladiator shield because it's pretty much core on Arthur. The Darkest Knight is also nice for having the movement speed because yeah. a lot of junglers tend to run blink. Johnny's even got the blink in 
you don't want to worry about an AO catching up in the slightest. So I think that, that was just a wise decision from Streak Up. It's probably going to be a bit um, like we were just talking about. This is where the Jingwei Kepri comes back into the discussion because this is a very low pressure dual lane. So Streak Up can kind of afford to drop that Darkest Knight's ultimate a little bit more defensively under the assumption that Flashpoint isn't really going to have much to work with in the early game either. Well, simplicity as well in the early game, the Vamana jungle does kind of struggle on the gank potential unless someone's really low. He's looking to farm up for the most part his fails in the jungle here and get to that mid-stage point as well. So both sides have that sort of composition of sitting back a little bit, wait for the mid to late game when their full compositions could come to effect. I almost wish Fails would have gone for the blink here over the beads early on. I understand he went for the purification beads because he's against an AO, but Vamana does have that big baby form to rely on CC immunity, and I think a blink would have probably allowed for Fails to have gotten off at least one or two successful ganks um, in, in this early matchup here, because right now, allowing Flashpoint to safely farm like they have been, for the past seven minutes, I, I think is kind of detrimental for simplicity in, in the mid to late game because I would definitely favor Flashpoint's composition well, as the overall. Game goes on. Really? As the game goes on, yes. The thought is just so problematic That's for double true. hunter comps that that is where I'm expecting a, a lot of the power to come from from Flashpoint. We'll see what Farrakrit can do then on this top this game if he's going to be such a, a linchpin. Early wall coverage from Simplicity all around the Gulf Fury area, whereas Flashpoint pretty much scattered around trying to keep vision of mainly the mid area. And just a little bit of a backwards rotation behind to pick off because Spanify has been covered as well near the Gold Fury pit. Fails though on this right hand side at the moment, looking for a bit of pressure on Sibby. But Sibby does have a ward just on his left hand side, just off camera. And I think Fails had steps and had given the game away. There's not much more for Fails to <laughs> really do. Attempts to look for some openings, but good vision. And that'll continue to keep Flashpoint covered, at least for their basics. However, Johnny looking to make the wrapper around. Sibi already pulling Maniac up into the ultimate. Nice poke damage onto Maniac already, and the Waxing Moon is missed for Johnny. But here's Genetics with the rotation. Maniac did a very good job of buying time, but he still didn't buy enough. Gets executed underneath the tier one tower. Johnny dips out of the fight. Sibi, meanwhile, however, suffers the consequences of his discretions as he will fall in trade. Who ended up getting the kill there? It will be fail. So both jugglers picking up a kill early. Fusify was maybe half a second too late there with trying to apply the Scarab's Blessing to save Sibby. A bit unfortunate because that could have resulted in a one for nothing exchange for Flashpoint, but Johnny did get the first blood in the end. And also, I have to give credit to Johnny for making sure to apply that last little tick of damage to get the execute off. That is not an easy feat. And the fact that he's just so patient and understanding of this AO, that's what makes him the best AO, I think, for uh, competitive play right now. Yeah, I think in general, I think everyone's very scared of Johnny's Alquang, and we don't get to see it too often. This is potentially one of the reasons why in the grand scheme of things, too. Bit of credit, though, for the supports. I mean, you saw Genetics get over to that fight in the solo lane a little bit quicker than Fusify. You mentioned Fusify couldn't get there with the range for the ultimate. Genetics getting there on the rotation a little bit quicker. You don't always notice that at the supports, but it can make a big difference and did there, making sure this stays relatively even. Only big deal is that Johnny got the first blood, which means he does get that bonus gold. But he is still trailing just a little bit behind Fails there as far as the XP department is concerned. Fails was able, it's important that Fails was the one who got the return kill for mm. simplicity because that way he's still able to at least keep pace experience wise with Johnny. Maniac comes back to lane being pressured once again under his tier one, uses the waxing meat relatively early on there just to pressure them back a little bit more. But then goes back in and Johnny's gonna make him pay. Meditate wasn't available. I don't think Maniac expected the burst from Johnny. Up oh, two kills to zero. That was gross, though, from Johnny yes, yet was. again. And we just discussed, you know, it might not be that worthwhile for, for Johnny to look for consistent ganks onto Maniac. But, I mean, you take what you've got. And yeah. it's a given because Maniac was just put under pressure. You know that he doesn't have teleport to get back to the lane in a timely manner. So if you're able to force him out of the lane, even if Johnny hadn't gotten the Oof. kill there, forcing him away is still important. Kaspanify losing a heavy trade there, has to trade ults away to get to safety. He'll be forced back to base, but it is a Jingwei after all, so he won't lose too much pressure. In the jungle though, Death Panther's in an awkward spot, pinned in place, gets his ultimate off, but already he's dead. Unless he can find a kill, he will fall down to Johnny. Fails rev the wraparound though, will make sure Fusify pays 
in response, making it a one for one as Johnny slowly walks away from Fails, trying to chase him down. Fails has a speed buff though, unlike Johnny for the moment, but the sustain is just too powerful. Johnny gonna get credit with the water Bates illusion, it. but Fails, talk about overstepping a boundary. Yeah, I think he, he, he felt confident going against Johnny, but Johnny was just waiting for Farrakrik and Kaspanify to turn up and make sure the baby died just as he got rid of the ultimate. Nice little timing from them, gives him a flashpoint, a nice little lead. Just faded in. I, I think he really just felt a little bit overconfident there, realizing that Flashpoint didn't feel comfortable attacking him while he was in the big baby form. But that's what ganks are all about. It, it was just Flashpoint tricking Fails into <laughs> believing that he was safe. Quick pause coming out here. Four kills for Johnny in just under 12 minutes already. We talk about this Alquand a lot, and he normally gets banned consistently against him. This is one of the times where we get to see an action and go, Okay, we probably won't get to see it again for a little while, but then somehow it always creeps through. I feel like this happens every single year, yeah. though, with, with Johnny specifically. Teams are always like, well, let's see what it's really... Let, let's see if he can actually truly have this same sort of AO performance against our Surely team. Surely he can't do it to he us. He can't do it to us. And, and we see the same thing every single time. Johnny farming everybody with AO. We'll see if we can continue this as the game continues. Well, continues as the game continues, yeah, because the problem is... The escapability of this team is pretty good from what Simplicity have put on the battlefield to cause problems for the Alquang. In the early game, it's not being shown at the moment. But as the game goes on, a lot of them on Simplicity have self-sustained, self-escapes that could cause a lot of problems for Johnny finding the execute, finding the killing blow. But as long as he keeps his burst damage up, he should be okay. Oh, Farrakrik may have caught himself in a tricky spot. He looked for the dash, but he got sneezed on by Fails, slapped with an umbrella. And a nice little kill for Fails, giving him three kills. So the, all the kills are on the junglers right now. Uh, here's the beauty, though, of double hunter compositions that Flashpoint have to be careful of because they've already lost their main form of contention for the Gold Fury. And just like that, Genetics didn't even Could need to apply the Fafnir stun, but got to be careful here. Johnny looking to go in. Everybody's already reset, though, from Simplicity. Love the workout of Genetics there to try and make sure Kaspanify doesn't get into the pit to find out how low the Gold Fury is, look for the airstrike. But he nearly got himself caught out in the process of that. Luckily enough, gets away for now. Flashpoint do find a consolation prize, however, in the purple on the left-hand side. A purple buff timer for a Gold Fury. I, I think that's a trade Simplicity are more than happy to make every single day of the week. But Far Creek does need to be careful uh, about Fails because that's the burst damage that I, I think Fails was hoping to find uh, a little bit earlier on. And now that he's got the Hasten Katana, he's going to have a much easier time, I think, committing to Far Creek in that big baby form. So it's really going to come down to Flashpoint to be a tentative towards their mid laner. This jungle of the mana as well, do we ex we normally see more damage builds starting off? Does it continue that route or does he end up going tanky as the game goes on? I think it really just depends on what you feel like your team needs most. Okay. For fails here, I think once you've committed into a Warrior Town by Crusher and a Hasten Katana, you're probably just going to continue building damage and maybe toss in a Hide of the Urchin or a, a Mantle sure. in order to find can... a little bit of that hybrid survivability. That's what I thought it would be, but the problem is, is I've seen him go for the Thorns now, and I'm like, well, why go Thorns if you're not going to be that tanky? Yeah, you know? that you're feels... not going to take too much, right? That feels forced. I think I would have mm. preferred to have seen a blink there. Yeah. Or even possibly an Aegis because he's already invested so much towards power and damage yeah. that it, it does feel a little bit awkward here for him to be trying to roll with the thorns. But maybe the idea here is that Johnny just ends up killing himself. I mean, there's also a lot of poke from Farrakrik and Kaspanify too. He is going to have to deal with crit Jingwei, I guess, which is true. So eventually it's going to cause a couple of problems for him where he can crit some of those back with the thorns and cause some problems there. Gold difference, marginal. Simplicity getting that last gold fury really did even things up in this game so far as the level's coming through. Everyone's pretty much matching pace outside of Johnny having an ever so slight lead over fails. Genetics jump straight into the mid lane, but Hammer won't find a home just yet. Farker gonna be able to evade that one pretty easily and it's back to farm town for every single one of these lanes. Uh, a Slight lull in the action, but I, I think that both of these teams have already done their damage checks with their junglers, yeah. and then the junglers just go back to farming. They're like, okay, this is how much damage I'm doing right now. Time to go finish killing off the rest of my jungle and see what I can bring about with the next 
itemization choice. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different changes through the years, but these comps on paper, if you saw them blind, you'd be like, we're looking at a mid to late game composition from both of them here, unless something goes crazy in the early game. So far, there was a chance of that. Johnny's trying to continue that pressure to Streak Up, but Streak Up has noticed the rotation around the back. The minion wave caused some problems for Johnny too. Johnny's over excited a little bit, but Bancroft's talent is keeping him topped up on health. Genetics is here to help out, but the hammer will not find a home, and Johnny will slip the net. Fusify has got to be careful here. Fails trying to all in commit. That Hasting Katana putting in work, and that is the danger of Vamana. Already down to half health. Fortunately enough for Flashpoint, they chose to make that play without the Gold Fury having been respawned just yet. But those are the type of actions where you really have to time your aggression. Because if that Gold Fury was available, that's simplicities. Oh, definitely. And on top of that, too, I love what Fusify did with the Talaria boots. Sometimes I'm not a big fan of them on supports, but it depends against the comp you're at, and that's kind of where support boots are right now. But having the Talaria means he's got extra movement speed, so even if he is getting hit consistently by fails with that Katana, he's at least moving at an okay speed where he may survive or at least get back to a teammate. Or at least make fails feel like he's wasting his time and doesn't really want to all in commit to a Kepri. Uh, about 15 minutes into the game. Of course, now we're approaching the 16 and a half minute mark, but still, I, I think that these teams both know what their comp's power spikes are, and as a result of that, we see them prioritizing farming over everything else. And you can see three members group in simplicity around the red buff now. Can Spanify gets aggressive against Streak Up? Streak Up and Can Spanify both happy to swing at each other consistently. With Asi online though, for Streak Up and a fully stacked transcendence, he can resustain okay, just not to the rate of Devourer's Gone as Jing Wei will. But Streak Up still not looking to take those boxing exchanges with Caspanify whenever the explosive bolts are procced because. Even with the slightest bit of crit chance, that one crit is all it would take to drastically shift the outcome of a 1v1 exchange. It's interesting to see Flashpoint looking to abuse the purple on the left-hand side. Now they're realizing they can't seem to get the time on the red right now, but they have found the purple. And the time of the pressure that Kaspanify just put on Streak Up worked nicely to bring his team over, steal the purple, and it's even developed into a tier 1 tower. A lot more on the line too, is the Gold Fury has just respawned. Going to be that Primal Fury as well, so if they're able to confirm it, would mean a benefit to the jungle camps being significantly easier to clear. I don't like the primal that much, Taco, personally. I, I think it's it's a bit bleh for me. I prefer I still prefer the Oni. I think Oni, Oni Fury gives a lot more. Oni, Oni is definitely, I think, a, a higher priority in terms of what goal theories you want to confirm. But as far as finding points on the map to force uh, fights over, yeah. uh, Primal Fury is going to be able to accomplish that pretty easily because you, you just don't want to give up that sort of map pressure to the enemy team because if Flashpoint or if Simplicity are able to confirm this Gold Fury, then they'll be able to also have the leisure of rotating elsewhere across the map because they've already got the best benefit to being on the dual lane side. Yeah, I mean, the neutral objectives have always been a contestant point. Mid camps from season one and two were always focused on as well as the Gold Fury and the Fire Giant. But whoever controls those, generally, if the game stays even and at the highest level, all players do play to a very high standard where it's pretty close anyway, where it's just individual picks as well as those neutral objectives that can swing the game in your favor. Fire Quick in mid, though, has Divine Ruin online now, so a bit of anti-heal. It will cause some problems for the Vamana, Changa, and Chiron, and Fafnir. Yes, there's four people with healing of some sort in their kit. So some anti-heal is definitely warranted this game. Oh, it's also just going to make things incredibly rough for these hunters. Darkest Knight already being forced out. Johnny looking to be the target here, but Cheeky. he's right behind Fails, and Fails has no idea. Yeah, Fails didn't know, but he will put the big baby. Genetics on the way to support. Round the corner comes Firecrick, though, defensively. As all teams start to muster towards the Gold Fury pit for the most part, or should I say Primal Fury, as that's the one on the cards right now, this should or could be a fight. It's all about who does the initial engage. I like this from Flashpoint to grab the Oracles first. That way, in case they do have to reset this Gold Fury, they can always be certain of whether or not Simplicity are committing to it. But Flashpoint, they've gotten two ultimates for free. That's the ghost sign to go in because Genetics already poked out to 10% health, it feels. He does get away. The ultimate from Farrakrig was charged there. But as you said, Genetics being forced back to base. Still has his ultimate available. But a couple of health bars a little bit too low now. Fails out with his ultimate as well in the jungle. Johnny's looking for a kill, though. And Genetics hits him with the hammer. Beads forced and Johnny's going to turn tail. Streak up giving chase and doing some pretty good damage as well. The rest of his team, however, the more important objective is on the cards. The Primal Fury goes down. 
And Johnny did a very good job of keeping people distracted. But it's the Thoth poke that I'm really looking at here you because Flashpoint yeah. Far Crick was just so far back, free casting from the back line. And what's going to hit him from Simplicity? At best, you have Death Panther's ultimate, but Chiron, you don't want to yeah. invest the Chiron ultimate just to start a fight with a Thoth in the back line. I think that's the other thing from Flashpoint 2. You mentioned how important this Thoth could be. Well, his objective secure itself is actually really good with the final judgment. Being able to channel that from distance and potentially execute it causes some problems. Simplicity, though, they have burst potential. Just like that. Sure, Fuse if I was there, but he couldn't stop it. Neither could Sibby. Sibby's still going aggressive, looking for a pick on Fails at the moment. Fails does have his ultimate back up as he gets hit by Excalibur. But on landing, thanks to the beads, he turns it around with the baby. Fuse if I still going and keeping genetics and Panther in check. But a three-man waxing moon from Maniac could just turn this fight. Sibby trying to cut across the entirety of simplicity, telling them that this is a no-passing zone. And it seems to have done the trick. Far Cry's going to be able to get out, although it did cost him both of his relics, as well as a shell from Fusify. That was a big relic pool, though, from Simplicity. And now we see Simplicity feeling like they have the ability to push forward, knowing just how much Flashpoint expended to keep their carries alive. So they do get a tier one tower. A couple of members coming back from base from Flashpoint, specifically Fusify at the moment, so they won't have the res available for a moment or two. Sibby's trying to make sure that Simplicity don't look towards the Fire Giant, which is more posturing than anything else from Simplicity here. Looking for a potential pick or a, just a rotation. I'm a little bit worried about Burst though, Taco, as this game's gone on. We saw that three-man waxing moon from Maniac there. But there was no follow-up consistent damage. I didn't. I just didn't see any burst that could follow up to you know pick one of those kills. Part of the risk with running a double hunter composition, you're you're mostly relying, I think, on the early to mid game with double hunters because you want those hunters to be ahead. But simplicity weren't really able to force much of anything, if anything at all. And I think that's why things have felt so awkward for them outside of the moments where Flashpoint has put themselves into weird positioning them, um, and so. Simplicity, they just got to be quick about their picks. They have to focus one target and bring them down. That way Flashpoint aren't able to just throw their carries into the back line and rely on Sibi and Fusify to beat the, the tanky enough frontliners that just allow their carries to continue free casting. Now the gold is relatively still even. Flashpoint still have a small lead, which could just be classed as that one kill difference between the two. However, map position. Sibi's only a couple of basic attacks away from taking down the final tier one tower that Simplicity have. The middle and the left hand side already being taken down as it stands at the moment. So the map slowly creeping into Flashpoint's favor. And you have to remember that when you're in the mid game, because we are in the mid game now between these two teams, I think one or two picks could ultimately result in that initial fire giant pool. I think also Flashpoint have the ability to, they're more likely to bait simplicity into an awkward engagement than vice versa because of the fact that Flashpoint have the threat of the confirm on an objective with a thuff. Look at it, fails his build now as well. We're talking about the fact that he went fawns and we expected more damage. He's gone for more defense now. Bulwark of hope. Extra bit of shield in, a bit of protection to deal with some of the magical damage from Johnny and Firecrick too. And then further magical defense on top of that could be the, the talisman more than anything else. It could be Heart Ward there, Heart Ward Amulet, or the Talisman of Energy, we'll see. Could also be a Pestilence. Maybe he doesn't want Good Johnny. Point. In case Johnny's trying to full commit to fails, it'll be a lot harder for Johnny to find the sustain. And Johnny has invested Typhons, yeah. for a Typhons on top of his Bancroft, so he is definitely trying to rely on self-sustain when he's committing to the carries or even tanks from Simplicity. It feels like Johnny could go aggressive against someone, lose half his health, the reset, heal back up and go again, potentially in the same engagement. So keep an eye on Johnny what he does at the moment. Flashpoint and Simplicity both grouping around the Fire Giant side of the map. Makes a lot of sense considering the fact there's nothing really objective-wise to look at on the left other than the red buff that was just stripped away by Johnny. Important to note, though, both of the supports on, on either side have already upgraded their first relics. A horrific upgrade for genetics and a shell upgrade, I believe, for Fusify here. Although I would probably favor the shell over the horrific just because the shell uh, the ability to absorb a couple of auto attacks could be a saving grace when you're dealing with a chiron and shibalanke i can agree with that just because of the horrific also part of the effect of horrific isn't just the slow it's also the attack speed so the attack speed will work consistently the slow however different story because of the fact that fusify has a heavenly here heavenly agility just that's going to cause problems with the sprint to just cancel that out it's also awkward 
to have the horrific because a lot of Flashpoint is mostly ability dependent. This is actually a real big Fury to be taken down. There's the Oni Fury, which means the next minion wave will go in favor of Flashpoint. But at the same time as that happened, Sibi just got picked to the Fire Giant Pit. Flashpoint overextended, left him alone as they did the Oni Fury. And now Simplicity are looking for a cheeky Fire Giant, but they've not got the damage yet. It's taken too long. Reinforcements are on the way. Where's the Toth Ultimate? There it is. It's too little, too late. Oh, he stole it anyway. He came through right at the last minute. Farrakrik uses his stun to penetrate and pick up the kill. Maniac Oof. didn't get the notice. The in Everybody else from Simplicity left the Fire Giant Pit, but Maniac was still Stunk on the it. objective, just hoping that they could full commit. But that, to me, also feels like severe miscommunication from Simplicity. You, When you get the Fire Giant down to 30% or lower against a team with a Thoth, your only option, I feel, at that point is to just full-on commit. They'd already killed Sibby. Oh, this is terrible. Oh. And Far Creek, they watched the final judgment get expended. Far Creek dashed in aggressively with the evade and punish. I just... All of Simplicity's carries were too concerned, and they hesitated, and they backed off. And now Flashpoint have an FG with a composition that I would never want to see have Fire Giant in a million years. Well, the current minion waves that are pushing down right now in mid and left hand side are the empowered minions as well, because they've just spawned with the Oni Fury. And then on top of that, you've now got Fire Giant buff around your waist. This is going to cause more and more problems for Simplicity to Enhance Fire Giant, too. Oh, yeah. Because Simplicity waited until after they found the pick on Sibby and. Well, they just have, I think what happened there, I'm looking looking at what I saw. It looked like Simplicity, sorry, it looked like uh, Flashpoint sent Kispanify to base a little bit earlier. They just got lucky more than anything else that they didn't lose the Fire Giant there. But Simplicity, you either have to commit or get out. Like, you can't do both. Simplicity got concerned because Johnny was spotted out by the right side mid harpies. And so they assumed that Johnny would be the first one inside of the Fire Giant objective. So Streak Up pulls off of FG. Maniac is the only one left there. To, to continue holding the aggro, but a, a Chunga isn't going to be able to outconfirm uh, a Fire Giant. It's it's just like we said, they just needed to all in on oh, the objective. Wrapping around the back is Kaspanify and Fusify then. They nearly got themselves in a bit of an awkward situation. Luckily enough, Kaspanify did gust himself to safety. Now all the tier two towers are down. Flashpoint have developed a nice little gold lead around 9,000, but they're not done yet. They're starting to siege up this middle Phoenix. This is rough stuff, though, for Simplicity. Trying to hold out against a comp with a Thoth. Far Creek just has poke for days, it seems. And Kaspainify also is a pretty heavy threat. Poison Star and Deathbringer online on top of the explosive bolts. Extra proc, crit proc damage. It's just disgusting, really. Only real problem I can see for Flashpoint is trying to get into the back line. Now they can poke out to high heaven with Far Creek and the Divine Ruin causing problems with the healing. So what they've done is they've spent Kaspanify towards the mid lane here, trying to split push against Fails, and Johnny's floating around. Only chipped away at Fails' health, actually. They will run out of minions, but backdoor protections will be there for a second or two longer. And it doesn't take two seconds for a, a carry at that stage of the game, level 20 full build, to bring down that middle Phoenix. Onto the left they go. You have to remember, nice waxing moon, though. Gonna force out the beast from Kaspainify, but the sprint has been popped from Fusify. That's a full-on reset from Flashpoint. And now with all of their members still looking relatively healthy and full of mana. And the worst thing you could have is have Johnny being able to circle round the back. If any of your targets get low, Johnny's gonna be in there looking for execute some fails. He's trying to keep him honest. Sibby taking a lot of damage under this Phoenix. Will need the resurrection and gets it from Kaspa from Fusify there. The problem is it's now not available. Full attention turned onto Johnny, but the damage has been done, Taco. The Phoenix is already dead they didn't realize though johnny uh -oh. looking to make maniac his next meal except for the fact that all of simplicity has not come to back him up chiron ultimate though that one's just for free for johnny yeah i was looking for the extra damage does good poke against johnny actually but it's not going to be enough to get a kill for them still only four to four in terms of kills the jungler's with the majority of those so far this game as Flashpoint don't overstay their welcome here now, they're going to fall back to base. Plenty of gold in hand, I would say, to be able to spend here and put to good use. As you can see, four, three and a half thousand for Sibby on that King Arthur. It's crazy to think that two Phoenixes are down for Simplicity, and yet the scoreline still reads four kills all on Johnny. No one died in that siege from Simplicity. It's just that the carries and even the tanks from simplicity the way that they were staggered between the two phoenixes that was just well executed by flashpoint and flashpoint playing to their advantages knowing that 
with the enhanced fire giant and 50% of those backdoor protections being removed, it's better to throw Caspanify into the lane with only one member from Simplicity trying to defend as opposed to having Caspanify look for pressure on the on the left hand Phoenix where the entirety of the uh, Simplicity team is at. Well, as we hit 30 minutes now, Primal Fury has spawned and Fire Giants due to spawn momentarily. Just one Phoenix left for Simplicity to defend here and also deal with Fire Minions in the left and middle lanes. Do we see a defense of Simplicity of the Fire Giant here? Do you, go, do you all in commit hoping for a play? Is this the right choice? Do you you, don't, you can't really just sit under your I think that's their you? best bet. Yeah. I honestly don't think that Simplicity are going to win this game trying to rely on base defense because their draft, it, their composition is just not better than Flashpoints when it comes to base sieging or base defending. Your best bet is a chaotic jungle fight that you can hopefully look for picks on, on the carries with or at least work your way towards the back line. But as it currently stands, I just have not seen Fails really have much of an opportunity to do anything against this Thoth Orging way. Johnny doing a good job right now, trying to pressure out these minion waves. Simplicity are cut between a rock and a hard place. They've sent Fails to the left hand side, as now Maniac could be in a bit of trouble here on the right. Does get rooted in place. No further follow up because in the jungle there's a fight going on between Johnny, Sibby, and the rest of Simplicity. Genetic sleeps away as Sibby keeps the aggression going on to Death Panther, who dashes away to safety and Streak Up, forced to use the darkest of nights there to keep the pressure going. But it won't be enough for now to stop Flashpoint Onslaught. But Simplicity are still hesitating. They haven't committed to anything, yet they've used two of their biggest team fighting ultimates all the while. The it's minions. been like a two and a half minute exchange between these teams, and Maniac lost Waxy Moon, Streak Up loses Darkest Night, and everybody on Flashpoint is perfectly healthy. I think that's more of a credit, though, to what Flashpoint did there. They recognize they're in the power seat, and if they commit to the Fire Giant, there's a chance Simplicity could do something to turn the game around. So why not just wait it out, let the minions do the work for you, and keep forcing Simplicity to use ultimates to stay alive and stay in contestion of this Fire Giant. But this is buying a lot of time for Simplicity. They will be able to get their mid Phoenix back up. Left Phoenix still going to be a little bit questionable here, but Fusion Fusify, a Johnny, tough spot. Johnny around the back, sees Panther, Panther gets his dash cancelled, and the horse is already dead. Waxy Moon hits three from Maniac, but it wasn't enough damage to cause them problems. Root after the fact from Fusify, and follow up with all the crits from High Heaven from Kaspanify will bring him down. It was four to four, it's now six to four. Make that seven to four. Surrender vote has begun. The game is done. The composition just didn't work for Simplicity Taco. I just think that this was an instance of Simplicity being hard out drafted. And I also think that teams really got to stop letting Johnny have AO. I mean, I, how, I think this is what, like my second year in a row of saying, why is this guy still getting AO? It happens, it happens a lot. 1-0 then to Flashpoint. A lot of what you saw in that game though really did come down to that Fire Giant versus the Primal Fury between the two, sorry, the Yanni Fury, should say. Between the two of them, the Fire Giant gets stolen away. It should have even been taken or reset. Yeah, I think I think Flashpoint already had a, a significantly stronger draft than that from Simplicity, but the Fire Giant call is definitely what sealed the deal on Simplicity uh, dropping an L for the first game. I definitely still think that there's opportunities though for Simplicity to bounce back. I don't think that that game is a, a good indicator of how truly skilled the Simplicity roster is because okay, these guys are definitely not a team. If they'd been able to flourish with that double hunter composition, I could definitely have seen this game going the other direction entirely, but I think this is just an instance of hesitation and a little bit too sloppy around the draft. Well, we'll find out if they can come back in game two. But I'll tell you what, that won't be the last time we see Fire Giant throws this year. It's only beginning. Let's get to the desk to break down game one. Hey, uh, Johnny's good at Alqua. That's breaking news. If we had like a breaking news banner, I would have asked for it. All four kills at He's really the 25-minute mark was all because of Johnny's Alquang, but it wasn't the reason that they won the game, actually. It was that Fire Giant steal. That was the big one. We should have a replay of that coming pretty shortly. What what happens here, Tolly? So they call for Fire Giant because everyone from Simplicity was on the left side of the map. Or sorry, Flashpoint was on the left side of the map, but Faircrack doesn't even steal it with the uh, Final Judgment. Steals it with the Evade and Punish because of how slow Simplicity was to commit. They were like waffling too long on that objective. And so many people actually peel it back and go towards mid camps That's where right. other people were Flashpoint were coming and yeah. no one's looking at the mage. Who's the most likely person to steal the objective in the first place? Simplicity definitely uh, has a lot going for them. They, they've definitely got a lot of talent, but moments like that make you realize that they still have uh, a ways to go 
in some aspects of the game. That that communication on objectives is something that usually takes longer than most things because it's you only get you only get so many of those opportunities to work on that during a game. And they had an interesting draft. This double hunter composition just didn't work out for them at the long run, but they kept it very even until that fire giant. It was four to three at 25 minutes. This reminds me of like season one, season two, European style kind of games. Whereas Johnny on the Alquang was really trying to get the ball rolling, just farming not only players but also jungle camps more effectively. Yeah, Streak Up had a good game for, for Simplicity. 20,000 player damage, top of the charts. Fails looked pretty good, I think. It was just that Maniac made a couple mistakes in lane, and it, it, it was moments like this where he just doesn't need to be there. You know, he just doesn't yeah. need to be in that spot. He already used his two for the immunity, and he comes back in, just not really respecting Johnny. Like, I, I get when you don't respect in the 1v1 matchup, but if a jungle is right there in your face, just give him all the time in the world. Let him leave the lane, and then you can get back into it. And we thought before the game started that it would have been Vamana solo lane and then the Changa jungle, but right. instead trying to get more passive farming in that solo lane. And, and this is the, uh, the Johnny highlight reel, and we usually have a lot of these after a Flashpoint game, and... I think we will continue to have a lot of these if he continues to get Alquang in particular. Yeah.